Blasphemy Law in the Republic of Ireland, Wikipedia Article Audio In the Republic of Ireland, blasphemy is required to be prohibited by Article 40.6.1.I of the 1937 Constitution. The common law offence of blasphemous libel, applicable only to Christianity and last prosecuted in 1855, was ruled in 1999 to be incompatible with the Constitution's guarantee of religious equality. The deficit was filled in 2009 by a new offence of publication or utterance of blasphemous matter, against any religion. The continued existence of a blasphemy offence is controversial, with proponents of freedom of speech and freedom of religion arguing it should be removed. The government formed in 2016 has committed to holding a referendum on abolishing the constitutional offence, which is required to amend the constitution. The legal system of Ireland grew out of the common law system of English law, and so Irish jurisprudence on blasphemy largely reflected that of England. The common law offence of blasphemous libel applied only to Christianity. Blasphemy could be committed by written or spoken words, by pictures, or gestures. Profanity was generally regarded by legal scholars as synonymous with blasphemy. In 1328, Adam Duff O'Toole was burned alive in Dublin for alleged heresy and blasphemy. Initially tried under canon law, he was handed over to the civil power as a repeat offender. He was a member of the O'Toole family which launched Gaelic raids on the Anglo-Norman Pale, and modern historians regard the charges as politically motivated. In later times, the penalty for a first offence of blasphemous libel was an unlimited fine and imprisonment, for a second offence it was banishment. The Anglican Church of Ireland was the established church from 1536 to 1871. Whether the crime could be committed against a denomination other than the established church was unclear, John Kelly suggested not. Early History Independence an Act of 1634-5 made it an offence profanely swear or curse, this was replaced as ineffectual by the Profane Oaths Act 1695, which applied to profanity in the presence of a justice of the peace or mayor. It had fallen into disuse long before its repeal in 2007. Six bills to suppress blasphemy and profaneness were introduced in the Parliament of Ireland between 1697 and 1713, but none was passed into law. There was a prosecution in the Kingdom of Ireland for blasphemous libel in 1703, Thomas Emlyn, a Unitarian minister was fined £1,000 and imprisoned for one year for denying the divinity of Christ. He remained in debtor's prison after his initial sentence until the fine was reduced to £70. Narcissus Marsh, the Church of Ireland Archbishop of Dublin, began a prosecution against a Presbyterian minister in Drogheda which was dropped by the Dublin Castle administration sympathetic to dissenters. Other incidents that century did not result in prosecutions. In 1713, Peter Brown, Bishop of Cork and Ross preached that loyal toasts to the glorious, pious and immortal memory of King William were blasphemous. The same year, a convocation of the Church of Ireland recommended prosecution of Robert Molesworth for an indictable profanation of the Holy Scriptures, after he had quoted Scripture in the course of an insult to their representatives at a viceregal levy. In 1756, Robert Clayton, Bishop of Clogger, questioned the Nicene Creed in a tract on religious tolerance, he was condemned by other bishops but died before any prosecution for blasphemy was brought. 
In 1852, in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, John St. Jean Bridgman, a Franciscan friar, was convicted in County Mayo after burning an authorized King James Bible. He viewed it as a superist work inferior to the Catholic Douay Reims Bible. While the indictment described his actions as in contempt of the Protestant religion, Judge Thomas Langawalla Freud advised the jury it is not the version of the scriptures which will warrant the commission of such an offence but rather a want of reverence to the scriptures. In 1855 at Kingstown, a Protestant Bible was burned on a bonfire of irreligious books organised by Vladimir Pecherin, a redemptorist Catholic priest. He was acquitted of blasphemy after claiming he had not intended to burn any Bibles. The case, described by as David Lawton as banal and petty, was prosecuted by the Attorney General for Ireland and the Solicitor General for Ireland after a complaint from Methodist Minister Robert Wallace. Common law precedents persisted after the creation in 1922 of the Irish Free State provided they were consistent with the 1922 Constitution, and later the current Constitution. The last British prosecution till 1977 was Bowman v Secular Society Limited in 1917. The Irish Law Reform Commission's 1991 consultation paper on the crime of libel states, if a case had arisen between Bowman in 1917 and 1937, it seems likely that an Irish court would have found the views in Bowman persuasive. The 1937 Constitution states the publication or utterance of blasphemous, seditious, or indecent matter is an offence which shall be punishable in accordance with law and the state acknowledges that the homage of public worship is due to Almighty God. It shall hold his name in reverence, and shall respect and honour religion. The Constitution also guarantees certain rights subject to public order and morality, including citizens' right to express freely their convictions and opinions and freedom of conscience and the free profession and practice of religion. In 1960, Paul O'Higgins criticized the 1937 Constitution's blasphemy provision as introducing uncertainty, and possibly increased stricture, compared to the common law as developed to that date. Corway v. Independent Newspapers In 1957, the Rose Tattoo was produced at the inaugural Dublin Theatre Festival. Alan Simpson owner of the Pike Theatre Club, was prosecuted for producing for gain an indecent and profane performance, with obscenity later added to the charge. The play's detractors were concerned by its sexual content rather than religion. The Law Reform Commission's 1991 report comments the equation of indecency and obscenity with profanity is probably misconceived. Although profane matter may sometimes be obscene or indecent, it is not necessarily so. Section 13 of the Defamation Act, 1961 prescribed penalties for blasphemous libel, but did not define the offence, which was presumed still to be the common law offence. The new maximum penalties were seven years penal servitude, or two years imprisonment and a £500 fine. Defamation Act 2009 The only attempted prosecution since 1855 was in 1995-1999, when John Corway brought private prosecutions against three publications for coverage of the 1995 divorce referendum specifically an article in Hot Press and two editorial cartoons, by Wendy Shea in the Irish Independent and Martin Turner in the Irish Times. The original cases were dismissed because of the lack of a definition of the crime of blasphemy, with that against independent newspapers and editor Angus Fanning appealed as a test case to the High Court. 
Shea's cartoon depicted the government party's leaders snubbing a Catholic priest who was holding out a communion wafer. Corway submitted, as one professing and endeavouring to practice the Christian religion through membership of the Roman Catholic Church I have suffered offence and outrage by reason of the insult, ridicule and contempt shown towards the sacrament of the Eucharist as a result of the publication of the matter complained of herein and I am aware of other persons having also so suffered. High Court Justice Hugh Gogan ruled against Corway on the basis that there was no actus reus, although there would have been mens rea. He also said he would not have given leave to prosecute as it would not serve the public interest. Corway appealed the decision to the Supreme Court, which upheld it. It ruled that the 1937 Constitution had extinguished the common law offence, stating it is difficult to see how the common law crime of blasphemy, related as it was to an established church and an established religion, could survive in a constitution guaranteeing freedom of conscience and the free profession and practice of religion. It refused to allow the prosecution, stating in the absence of any legislative definition of the constitutional offense of blasphemy, it is impossible to say of what the offence of blasphemy consists, neither the actus reus nor the mens rea is clear. In the absence of legislation and in the present uncertain state of the law the court could not see its way to authorising the institution of a criminal prosecution. The Law Reform Commission's 1991 report opined that there is no place for the offence of blasphemous libel in a society which respects freedom of speech. It said the Prohibition of Incitement to Hatred Act 1989 provided an adequate protection for outrage against religious belief. However, since banning blasphemy is mandated by the Constitution, Abolishing the offence would require a referendum. A referendum solely for that purpose would rightly be seen as a time-wasting and expensive exercise. The Commission's report, therefore, outlined criteria for a statutory definition of blasphemy which could serve until such time as Article 40.6.1.I might be changed as part of a broader constitutional amendment. The 1996 report of the Wariachtis Constitution Review Group agreed that the retention of the present constitutional offence of blasphemy is not appropriate. Implementation The Defamation Act 2009 implemented many of the recommendations of the Commission's 1991 report. The bill as introduced omitted reference to blasphemy pending a review by the Wariachtis Joint Committee on the Constitution. In March 2008, Brian Lenahan, then Minister for Justice, Equality and Law Reform, said. Proposed Referendum In England and Wales blasphemy traditionally only consisted in the scandalising of the established church. It is probably the case in Ireland with the enactment of the Article 44 provision in 1937, that blasphemy was extended to cover all of the denominations recognized in the Constitution and that in 1972 it passed into a stage where it extended itself to all theistic religions, since all theistic religions are honored by the Constitution, although Christianity is uniquely invoked in the preamble. Other Laws and Regulations the Joint Committee on the Constitution's report on Article 40.6.1.I was published in July 2008. The committee had discussed the case of comedian Tommy Tiernan, whose stand-up routine on the Late Late Show parroted the Gospels, offending many viewers. The Bar Council of Ireland made a presentation to the committee pointing out that blasphemy and treason were the only crimes specifically mentioned in the Constitution. Neville Cox stated, When the English Parliament originally enacted blasphemy laws, 
it was with a view to appeasing an angry god who was irritated by despicable literature and who was causing plagues and fires to occur in London. That was the historical reason for the law. The Law Commission in England suggested that there were two types of situation where what had previously been characterized as blasphemous material might generate a public interest in its prohibition. The first is where there is incitement to hatred and the second is where there is simply an excessive offense to religious sensibilities. The term blasphemy does not relate to either of these. It is, therefore, a misdescription of a changed law. The Wariachtis Committee's report concluded. The reference itself has effectively been rendered a dead letter by virtue of the decision of the Supreme Court in Corway. Furthermore, the committee is of the view that in a modern constitution, blasphemy is not a phenomenon against which there should be an express constitutional prohibition. On May 20, 2009 at the Bills Committee stage, Section 36, dealing with blasphemy was introduced by Minister for Justice Dermot Ahern as an amendment. Section 36 defines a new indictable offence of publication or utterance of blasphemous matter, which carries a maximum fine of €25,000. The offence consists of uttering material grossly abusive or insulting in relation to matters held sacred by any religion, when the intent and result is outrage among a substantial number of the adherents of that religion. A defence is permitted for work of genuine literary, artistic, political, scientific, or academic value. Religion excludes profit-driven organizations or those using oppressive psychological manipulation. Upon conviction under Section 36, a court warrant can authorize the Garda Siachana to enter premises to search for and seize any copies of the blasphemous material. Only the Director of Public Prosecutions can instigate proceedings, as distinct from private prosecutions like Corway. Ahern said, I am, puzzled as to the hysterical and incorrect reaction whipped up by some media reporters and commentators on this point. I as the responsible minister, and we as legislators, do not have the luxury of pursuing a do-nothing approach while we wait for an opportune moment to move a constitutional amendment. Mary McAleese, the President of Ireland, convened the Council of State to discuss whether the bill should be referred to the Supreme Court to test its constitutionality, she decided not to do so. The bill became law when McAleese signed it on July 23, 2009, and came into force on January 1, 2010. Footnotes as of May 9, 2017 no prosecution has ever been brought under the 2009 Act. The advocacy group Atheist Ireland responded to the enactment by announcing the formation of the Church of Dermatology. On the date on which the law came into effect, it published a series of potentially blasphemous quotations on its website and vowed to challenge any resulting legal action. After the 2015 Charlie Hebdo shooting, Ali Salim of the Islamic Cultural Centre of Ireland suggested that the blasphemy provision of the Defamation Act 2009 should be applied to any media outlet reproducing cartoons depicting Muhammad as part of the J.E. Sui's Charlie campaign. In 2016, the Irish Secretary of the National Union of Journalists said that Charlie Hebdo would have been in clear breach of the Irish law. In 2016, Neville Cox said, My view is the 2009 Act fulfilled a constitutional obligation on the crime of blasphemy, but skillfully rendered the law completely unenforceable. I am not saying that was the intention. Dermot Ahern commented in 2017, We implemented the crime but made it in a way that it would be virtually impossible to prosecute. 
On May 6, 2017, the Irish Independent said an unnamed man informed them that the Garda were looking into a formal complaint of blasphemy he had made against Stephen Fry and Root after Fry's 2015 appearance on Root's religion programme The Meaning of Life. The complainant said that he was not personally offended by Fry's comments. Unofficial Garda sources said that a file would be sent to the DPP, who was highly unlikely to prosecute. On May 8, 2017, the Garda said they would not proceed with an investigation as no injured parties had come forward and they were unable to find a substantial number of outraged people. Notes After the 2009 Act, Atheist Ireland said that it would be holding a series of public meetings to launch a campaign for secular constitutional reform. In March 2010, a Hearns press officer said the minister might ask the cabinet to hold a referendum to remove the reference to blasphemy from the constitution in autumn 2010 at the same time tentatively planned for a referendum on an amendment relating to children's rights. Asked about this in the Dale, Ahern did not offer any commitment, but said. The program for government did indicate the possibility of referendums on a number of issues. If we were to have a number of referendums on one day, it would be appropriate to put to the people a question on the section of the Constitution relating to blasphemous and seditious libel. In the event, no referendums were held before the dissolution of the 30th Dale in January 2011. Before the ensuing general election, Atheist Ireland asked parties Do you believe that blasphemy should be a criminal offence? Fine Gael, Sinn Féin and the Workers' Party said no, while Labour and the Green Party supported a referendum to remove the constitutional requirement. After the election, the Fine Gael Labour Coalition's Programme for Government promised a constitutional convention to discuss potential amendments, including removing blasphemy from the Constitution. The convention was established in December 2012, and received submissions on the blasphemy issue from various groups and individuals, mostly in favour of abolition. The Irish Council of Churches, a coalition of the main Christian churches in Ireland, described the provision as largely obsolete. The convention considered the issue at its seventh plenary session on 2-3 November 2013. Several submitters were invited to make presentations at the meeting. There were expert presentations from university academics Neville Cox, Owen O'Dell and Maeve Cook, the Knights of St. Columbanus, the Islamic Cultural Centre of Ireland, and an NUIG PhD student argued in favour of retention, while Atheist Ireland, the Humanist Association of Ireland, and the Irish Council of Civil Liberties argued for its removal. Convention members voted 61-38 against retaining the existing constitutional prohibition of blasphemy, 53-38 in favour of replacing it with a prohibition of incitement to religious hatred and 5049 against having a statutory prohibition of blasphemy. If a statutory prohibition were used, members voted 8111 in favor of a new provision rather than the 2009 Act. In October 2014, Minister of State Ayadan O'Riardane gave the official government response to the Convention's report on blasphemy announcing that it had decided to hold a referendum on the issue. In January 2015, Dowsiak Enda Kenny said there would not be a referendum on the issue before the next general election, due by April 2016. He said that two referendums were already to be held in 2015, on marriage equality and reducing the age of candidacy for the presidency, and any more might distract voters from focusing on the issues.
After the election on February 26, 2016, protracted negotiations led to a fine gale independent government on May 7 with confidence and supply support from Fianna Fail. The government program published on May 11 includes a commitment to holding a referendum on blasphemy. After the May 2017 story about Stephen Fry, a Department of Justice spokesperson said that it had undertaken preliminary consultations and preparatory work on the amendment, with future scheduling to be decided by the government. Simon Harris, the Minister for Health, said the existing law was silly, a little embarrassing and needs to be changed. In the Dale Gary Adams asked Enda Kenny whether a referendum would be held in 2017. Kenny replied there are quite a number of referenda backed up, and they take time. In September 2017, New Dowsiak Leo Varadkar gave an indicative timeline for planned referendums, with that on blasphemy in October 2018, simultaneous with the presidential election and two other referendums. The Censorship of Films Act 1923 mandates the chief censor to prohibit a film or scene unfit for general exhibition in public by reason of its being indecent, obscene, or blasphemous. A 1925 amendment extended the power to ban advertisements for films. These powers are retained in the most recent legislation of 2008. Audrey Rose was banned in 1977 on the grounds that its treatment of reincarnation amounted to heresy. The censor has wide discretion in interpreting the statutory criteria. Monty Python's Life of Brian was banned by Frank Hall in 1980 for being blasphemous. When resubmitted in 1987, it was passed uncut by his successor Seamus Smith. These acts apply only to cinema films, the Video Recordings Act 1989 does not include blasphemy as grounds for prohibition, but does include incitement of religious hatred as grounds for censorship or an outright ban. In September 2016, reports that the lack of an Irish release for my Scientology movie was due to the blasphemy laws were dismissed by the Irish Times as media flim-flam, Neville Cox said the laws were of no relevance to the situation. The censorship of publications acts did not include blasphemy among possible grounds for banning, which were indecency, obscenity, promotion of unnatural contraception or abortion, an excessive focus on crime. In the debate on the 1946 bill, Senator Louis Odia suggested adding blasphemy as a criterion. The Advertising Standards Authority for Ireland's Voluntary Code of Conduct requires advertising to avoid causing offence on grounds of religion and not to ridicule or exploit religious beliefs, symbols, rites, or practices. A 2005 Patty Power poster, parodying Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper with Jesus and the Apostles in a Casino, was withdrawn for breaching the religion guidelines as well as taste and decency. The crime of sacrilege was defined, under the Larceny Act 1861 and the Larceny Act 1916, as breaking and entering a church and committing any felony. Sacrilege was the charge used to prosecute theft from church collection boxes. It was abolished as a separate crime by the Criminal Law Act 1976 whereby several types of breaking and entering were replaced by the single crime of burglary.